Hey, welcome to the show. Before we dive into the conversation with guest Darren Olean, Mr. Super Life himself, I want to bring your attention to today's sponsor, and that is Caldera Lab and their Good Serum. Look, if you're like me, a busy guy, someone that maybe doesn't want or have the time to devote to a full-blown skincare routine, all the washing and scrubbing and peels and masks and all those things, which don't get me wrong, I do appreciate from time to time, but taking care of ourselves means honoring our time. And for me, the Good Serum from Caldera Caldera Lab has been a game changer. I've been using it daily for over a year now, and I can tell you improved skin tone, hydration, noticeably reduced lines and wrinkles. I absolutely love this serum really because of what's not in it. Just pure botanicals, things that I can look up and immediately know what I'm talking about, knowing what I'm reading. Caldera Lab is hooking it up. They're making skincare for guys so easy and safe and effective. I use it, you're even gonna hear how Darren uses it. He loves Caldera Lab just as much as I do. And as a proud partner of the show here, you can get the good for yourself or ladies, now is a great time to get this for the man in your life. Holiday seasons are upon us, so you can actually save 20% by heading to calderalab.com slash everforward. That's C-A-L-D-E-R-A-L-A-B.com slash everforward to save 20% off of the good serum. Get it? Use it. You're going to love it just like Darren and I both do. Hey, this is Darren Aline. Amazing conversation on Ever Forward. We dove into everything inside as it relates to everything outside. We celebrate the abundance that we can consume so that the inner world of us and our spirit and our life can be forever living forward and ever forward, moving forward. Love the conversation. Enjoy our episode of Ever Forward. So I think that the world is so, we are so used to the seduction. And I saw it, you know, I saw the seduction of be a victim. Mm. And now it's subtle. It's very subtle because for now, it's been two years since I lost my house. And people that, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And, and although that's coming from a place of kindness, the world actually teaches us, I believe, to stay in that vibration. Oh my God, the, the house, and oh my God, I lost everything. Oh my God, la, 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 la. To stay in the and world, when, to stay in the loss, yeah. Stay in that. When in truth, it's all an inner game. It's all an inner excavation of the truth. Who am I? What am I? Where am I going? What is my view? And what do I hope to accomplish? Because my view is it's not happening to me Mm. as it's just randomly occurring. It happened for me in ways that I may not be able to unpack, maybe some right away, but maybe I'm not under able to unpack all of the blessings that happened to me losing everything I own for the, another, for the next 10, 20, for the rest of my life, 20 years, 30 years, whatever. A long term teacher for sure. Yeah. But I do know that there's been infinite gifts as a result of the tremendous loss that I, that I occurred. So that being said, isn't a lot of life. We can't escape pain. We can't, escape confrontation we can't escape fear resentment shame anger but how long do we want to hold on to it are we willing to look underneath it are we willing to take ownership of our experience of what is there for me to to look into the mirror and to be a better person as a result so if i look through the lens of everything in my life everything is happening for me everything good, bad, whatever you want to define it, it's happening for me. So if I look at it through that, there's no accidents. There's no accident in the universe. There's no, there's none of that, that it's the the symphony of balance within this mystery that we can't possibly get our heads around. 
but I look at life because that for me, that takes me out of the victimization, puts me into this understanding, this unity that I am absolutely without a doubt connected to everything and everyone and every cell in my body is connected to every cell, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so for me, that's the seat that I sit in when everything gets hard or when everything is not hard. It's like, listen, it is this, it's an up and down. It's a turn around. It's a twisting. It's a turning. What are you going to do? What are you going to do with 2020? Are you literally just going to complain about all these things and people? Do and I agree with January 1, 2021 to hit and all of a sudden all our problems are solved? Like, it doesn't work that way, you know? It's, and it's not. Yeah. There is no vaccination that's going to take this away. There is no uh, official mm -hmm. government or otherwise that's going to magically have all the correct answers. None of it. But I do know that there's a lot of things that we can do. There's a lot of things that we can choose, choosing how to take care of ourselves. Yeah, if, if these people aren't going to have the, the, the conscious conversation and the rational common sense conversation of sleep well, eat well, drink good water, eat plants, celebrate your family and community, get good sleep, exercise, that you largely will be the strongest person ever to deal with everything in life meditate, do breathing exercises, do all get outside, get under the sun, turn on your vitamin D, turn on your connection with the entirety yes. yeah. of this yes. planet. Yes. If we're not going to, if, if the mainstream is not going to talk about that, then they're doing something else that yeah. does not align with truth. There is another agenda. Yeah. So it's like without getting into that conspiracy that I'm probably will never know mm. that we, you and I speaking right now and the people listening, you know that what I just said is common sense of what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Connect, yeah. connect like this, be open with each other, smile, take your freaking mask off at home and smile with your kids and your family. And you know what? And I'm going to say it. The fact that any government, our California insanity telling us who we can't hang out with during Thanksgiving, and the fact that you can jump in your car and it's killing exponentially more people than anything else, COVID or otherwise, that they can take a, you know, they, they can take that agenda of telling me who I can hang out with during the holidays and go fly a freaking kite with it. <laughs> You know, so it's like, it. you know, that, that I did not, that is not the freedom of this country, you know, so yeah. informed decisions. So I'm not going to go off on COVID and all of that stuff. My point to all of that is don't give your power away, command mm -hmm. and demand your power, your strength, take care of yourself because you will have infinitely exponentially more power more sovereignty more serenity more community more joy more power to make choices and then resonating and collaborating with people like that that is how our country was developed and if things don't align with that then we need to take our country back whatever that means mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whatever that means so, you know, again, person in the mirror. So anyway, I, I, I don't know why I'm going off so much on all that. but <laughs> Well, but, Darren, yeah. I, I love it, man. Uh, if there ever was a more powerful introduction into the show, uh, I think that was it. Welcome officially to Everford Radio. I'm on here with Darren Olean. And um, truly, man, uh, before I could even get into my spiel of, uh, of our story here, I mean, that completely embodied it. Um, that uh, that is the ever forward mentality. That is that everything that happens around me is for me, uh, and we have to step up. It's a choice. I love how you're talking about that. It is a choice to to view it like that, and it's not an easy one. It it, it with that comes all of the work, all of the responsibility for for self empowerment, self education. 
fulfillment, um, but then also, you know, to become the teacher for those around us, because if we can maintain dominion over our world and then spread that and resonate, like you were saying out to the people and loved ones around us, I mean, that is the world that I want to live in, that I choose to live in and the one that I am building and damn sure the one you are building as well, man. So welcome. Well said <laughs> ever forward, brother. <laughs> well, I love, I love that. What a great, what a great, uh, title of your podcast because Thank that you. is that is it is ever forward mm. it is ever forward leading but it's also not like you said you hinted at and mentioned that this is not and I use this term all the time mm. in my podcast too a fatal convenience the convenience yes. is to not turn and own your pain your shame your anger your resentment and your fear it's so easy to project that out at the world. And to find all of the reasons to support your pain, your anger, your resentment, your fear, and project it all over somebody, vomit all over somebody. When in fact, most of it, you already have inside of you. Mm. And, and so yeah. much vitriol, so much anger that's coming out. You know, there's a, there's a great, there's a Native American that said to me maybe 15 years ago, he said that when you squeeze an orange juice, what's in the orange comes out. Mm. So, so when you squeeze an orange, orange juice comes out. When you get stressed and life squeezes you, what you already have in you is coming out. Wow. Now, now it's up to you. What do you want to do? Do you want to run around being upset and angry? that your world is destroyed if this guy becomes president or this guy. Are you really going to let that suppress and depress you when in fact, maybe this world's a little, maybe 98% of this crap going on in our lives is affecting us directly. I mm -hmm. certainly have so, uh, know so, but, but at the end of the day, when I'm in my home, when I'm living my life, largely 99% of my life, I'm, I'm not, you know, thank you I'm for not. saying that. Thank you for saying that. I mean, not to, to discredit any other way that any other person is affected by the higher ups. And, you know, I know how that goes. Uh, that reminds me a lot of my time in the military. Um, but really, here we are now in our homes more than ever in our world, having to create a life out of our home out of our home unit it does not directly affect us to the level that I think we allow it to. And I may get some hate on that, but I mean, truly like we are home, we have dominion over our home and what else is going on that is choosing for us. It really, I think we're just allowing that kind of excuse to, to just go on and on and on. Yeah. And, and listen, you know, there is, of course, I agree with you. And 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 there's very real there's millions of jobs mm. that have been destroyed of and, course and, of course yeah. you know I, there's a part of me that wants that that wants to if anyone is listening to this and knows of an organization uh small business organization that's that's potentially filing class action lawsuits against mm. um governors uh uh um and higher ups that are making these choices uh and destroying people's lives over the, the small number of people uh, that are being uh, adversely affected mm -hmm. by uh, th this pandemic over, they're not talking about the suicide rates. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not talking about the, the exponential lives of our children that have been just absolutely destroyed. Oh. Um, and so there's a, there's a massive amount of information that they're not talking about and that, that, it, that is being affected. And, you know, the, the, the low class, middle class, yeah. all of us yeah. class are, are being affected. The human class, yeah. The human class are being affected. So I, I, I want to, so if anyone's listening, I want to support anything where it makes sense that um, those people that have lost everything, that, that they give another chance to reopen and let informed Americans make their own choices protect those people that are compromised hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then the rest of us that have a 99.98% um, dominion mm -hmm. over uh, this supposed, you know, this virus and Corona and all of that stuff, 
then let us make our own choices. Mm -hmm. Just like you make our own choices of eating whatever we want. And, you know, we have uh, only 2.5% of Americans are actually deemed as healthy. Mm. So we're letting that happen. Mm. Uh, we're letting people die uh, by the truckload every day in cars and accidents. We're letting, we're letting chronic letting illness and disease just run rampant in the world. Yeah. And yeah. that's been something that I really want to dive into. I know you could speak volumes on this. Um, I, before you know, doing this, I worked in a clinical environment. I've been a clinical health coach for years. And I would hand in hand with people's primary care providers walk them out of the doctor's office and into my room to go over working out, to go over physical activity, to go over nutrition, to go over relationship health, to go over stress, and not to knock anything significant that they worked on with their doctor. So much of that work is necessary for acute care. Um, sure. But the feedback that we would get when they would just address making small little healthy changes in their day by addressing a past trauma in their life, by addressing uh, a, a superior at their job that was just suppressing them and adding immense stress that they would then take home to their families. Those lifestyle healthy habit changes were the ones that I over years saw build up the greatest healthy snowball for them, but then also would melt away so many things like obesity, disease, uh, indigestion, chronic illness, headaches, fatigue, energy levels, like, where does it all begin, Darren, if you could boil it all down, like, where does it begin for somebody to truly just to take ownership of, of their health and really their life? <laughs> well, I, I think you, you, you hit it on the head and that that ownership is first uh, understanding that you're making the choice. Okay. And, and, yeah, and, you know, choice is deciding that you're going to make a change is the single greatest choice. Now it isn't no longer rocket science. Now, listen, if you have a underlying condition, then you need to address that. And, and that always should be done with your healthcare provider, but agreed. Um, but the, I, the, the foundational things, which is what I put in, put, put in my book, super life is and the reason I wrote it that way is because people 7% of all Americans, nearly 10%. So uh, 30 million people are not even drinking an ounce of water a day. So consider that water never without arms reach. Never. There you go right here. Exactly. Man. <laughs> exactly. So, I'm on my second one already. And it's only 1130 AM. Perfect. So so imagine that the core of every chronic disease is dehydration. Mm. And then you add on top of it, people are drinking poor quality water that can't even effectively get into the cellular membrane. Um, and then on, to add on top of it, water quality uh, is, it's convenient to turn on the tap, but it's inconvenient to have pesticides, herbicides, PCBs, pharmaceuticals, uh, uh, VOCs, volatile organic compounds, reacting to uh, every yeah. many different types yeah. of chemicals in the in the water, uh, heavy metals, uh, 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 pesticide runoff, things that we maybe don't even know about yet. You know, exactly. that are at such a minute level that we haven't even tested. You know, what is the efficacy against us? Exactly. So, Erin um, Brockovich, you know, <laughs> she's yeah. a yeah. big yeah. big big advocate for water, and not and let's not wait until you know, the water's so bad that it's literally killing people. But slowly, if we don't clean our water and rebuild it back again, then then mm -hmm. largely we're just getting this, you know, thinking we drinking water when in fact, it's kind of a toxic soup over time, it's really detrimental, it's not allowing for pure hydration. So mm -hmm. hydration's key number one, uh, reverse osmosis, add a pinch of Himalayan crystal salt, which gives the electrolytes, the yeah. size molecules that you need for for osmosis in, in, in and out of the cell. So super easy. Um, and then, you know, you know, again, plants, 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 eat more variety of plants, uh, salads, um, you know, 
try different colors and add that to your diet, realizing that every color is basically a different polyphenol, different antioxidant, diff different vitamin and mineral content, support your local farmers more than ever, support people that are growing food next to you, uh, that you know where these farms are from, uh, support the farmers that are also transitioning into organic agriculture, permaculture, biodynamic, uh, you, you'll, you'll pay for local food as well as not transported food that was picked too early and as micro micronutrient mm -hmm. star. Mm -hmm. So certainly add in all your plants, add in the diversity. I would say if you, if you're not cutting out meat and dairy, fish and eggs, which are largely a whole nother toxic side of it. Um, most of that, where it's coming from, uh, just lower that consumption and increase your plant intake, increase your water intake, make sure you're getting eight, hours of sleep a night get a mask yeah. turn out all the lights put a mask on um get out of that part for sure sleep is king. King, king king you can't you can't make that up you can't coffee yourself out of a bad night's sleep you, you <laughs> we can, try right we try <laughs> we try all the time and so when you're number one uh incident of dehydration is fatigue so imagine that i'm tired but i'm jittery because of the coffee so my adrenals are shot and then I try to go to sleep, but I can't really go to sleep because the acidification is creating it harder and harder for my body to switch over from the melatonin to really then allow myself to sleep. And then we wake up again. We don't drink the water. We reach for the coffee. We haven't slept so good. And the cycle continues and continues and continues. So you're way behind. Not to mention, I think the stat is one night of bad sleep or one to two yeah. hours less sleep a night cuts your immune system down by 30 percent yeah so Not now we're, most people when you wake up in uh poor night sleep but like you're saying you actually wake up if you took your labs you would be considered pre-diabetic most most of the times exactly yeah. that's the power of sleep people that's the power of sleep and that that kind of research when they start pulling those bits of information mm -hmm. together is so astonishing and then the, also the microbiome Mm. is so reactively different and stressed <clears throat> when when you don't get a good night's sleep so therefore the body's ability to break down assimilate and transform your food to be able to be used uh, by your body which your microbiome is intimately connected to we have to have it in order for the proper metabolism <clears throat> so all of those things are so connected so that is a stressful situation that you can remedy. Um, and then, like I said, diversification of food. I would also then nose breathe. Uh, I just had my podcast with Patrick McEwen. I think it, I think it just came out today uh, or whenever this is, it's going to be out uh, whenever yeah. this is aired. But um, <laughs> so nose breathing takes down the stress, puts you into uh, parasympathetic nervous system. So of optimal performance rather than a stressful response. Try to shut your mouth while you sleep. Some people even have used tape. Yeah, right? I heard of that, yeah. Yeah, so if you don't have a compromised sleeping apnea, obviously do not tape your mouth shut if you're compromised sleeping, but it can very much, even uh, light athletic tape where you can actually uh, breathe through it a little bit helps train your system to receive more oxygen through the nitric oxide induction through the nasal passages. And, and then not, not to mention you'll receive more oxygen and more oxygen saturating in your body is intimately connected right. to no disease bacteria virus can survive. And no one's ever going to gonna knock adding more oxygenation to your circulatory system. Exactly. It's, yeah. You can't go wrong. It reminds me, uh, are you familiar with James Nestor's breath? The book? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Powerful, powerful, incredible stuff. And so it's, it's beautiful that we've taken uh, what the yogic practices have been trying to tell us for a long time, but now we've really started to understand and implement breathing in a whole other way. It went from kind of this esoteric explanation yeah. to this very grounded physiological uh, stress less situation and uh, optimal performance. And that's not for an athlete. That's mm -hmm. for someone uh, sleeping well, drinking well, breathing well. You're now eating well. Uh, now you're talking about basically 
improving your performance by by exponential amounts just by those things alone and therefore getting out in the sun getting back into circadian rhythm viewing some light without um, glasses on in the morning allowing for that circadian rhythm to to support your rhythm while you go to sleep your melatonin production like these are all easy easy things easy that you can do sure. that are going to then boost yeah. your immune system and naturally keep you strong and of course exercising and moving uh there was a um dr huberman just had this article that his colleagues put out and uh there's some incredible serotonin dopamine effect mm. in the brain just by moving forward so literally taking a walk really? or doing anything that that is like even propulsion that, that forward. yeah just a, just moving forward mm. in any kind of way naturally turns on brain uh mechanisms neurogenesis uh optimizing immune system response like hey that bodes well for my brand that's for sure (laughs) ever forward baby (laughs) exactly so you know now you're directly connected to research that's supporting brain performance and uh, healing performance And, and and you know that's 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 a no 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 pun intended but that's a no brainer that by moving, even if you're having a bad mood, if you're fighting with your spouse, if you have enough awareness to go, you know what, I'm I'm getting really upset. Let me just go walk around the block. I'll come back, take a breath, walk around the house, in my head. And you're literally changing your brain's chemistry and your brain waves, and you will have a greater, instead of convergence, right? converging down on a issue or a problem or a person you'll be able to expand and have a greater view and a greater ability to step out of the fight or flight response Mm -hmm. and then not further support the anger fear resentment that you're about to just pour gasoline on so you know, we, we all come from those arguments. We've all had them. We've all made mistakes. We've all said things that we didn't want to say, and it only further uh, creates bad situations worse. Yeah. So these are things that are going to help your body, but they're also going to help your brain and your relationships. And you mentioned that as well. I mean, it's so key. I say it all the time, where the mind goes, the body will follow. And, you know, even vice versa. If we exactly. honor and respect the external self, eventually i believe in my experience we will have you know eventually kind of get to that internal reflection point and we'll begin to address things it's same thing inward versus out you know if we address internally what's going on and try to help that self then it, it is only natural that it will trickle out and manifest into external physiological change 100 percent, and you know and i i you know i love i love the faith of that too when you just like hey uh not only am I benefiting right now of filling myself up full of love and support and just acknowledging this amazing connection and even asking those questions, who am I? You know, like every day, yeah. who am yeah. I? And just sitting with the answer, not allowing your, doesn't have to come from your mind. You don't have to go, Hey, and answer that. It's, I'm Darren. I, are you really just Darren or are you this kind of being that's having well, a my today experience. and that and we get yeah. we get to kind of have some some malleability with that i think you know who we are i'll even say should kind of change day to day because look oh, at what everything God. you were just talking about when we're incorporating all of these things uh health wellness sunlight water movement like it is changing us at the molecular level um and we do things, you know, for a positive influence, we get a positive result, hopefully. And just so just think about all the things that we're not doing and or that we are doing that we believe that we have a negative connotation. Imagine that negative influence it's having. Um, it's so kind of esoteric in a way, but also it's so fundamental, I think. Um, and this, I think, is just the, the fundamental, simple truth that if we can all get to imagine what the change we can create in our own lives in the world and on that kind of global scale, Darren, I'm really curious when when you were traveling the world, when you were, you know, going through this TV show and when you were, you know, connecting with people and countries and superfoods and just, you know, biohacking and all of these incredible things that people of the earth and the earth have to offer. Was it more for you 
a, like a, a confirmation of, yes, the things that I have found, the things that I'm working on for, you know, myself to be true, because look what else is going on in the world? Or were you just kind of like in, in all of what else is out there that you have not even tapped into? I think it's a combination of both, for sure. I mean, you know, it was certainly fueled by a curiosity. Oh, of course. And, and the curiosity for me didn't end at okay, I've read enough research papers on, on, on my Google search. Um, it came by way of realizing that that's not the end all be all of anything, just because we can find out information about information, about information, about information. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And doesn't mean that it's accurate or true. and doesn't mean that that stops there. And so for me, I, 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 my curiosity was, I mean, really at the core of superfood hunting and that kind of thing was about, I mean, the awe of the world when you're sitting on a mountaintop at 17,000 feet uh, or if you're sitting in the jungle uh, having ants bite you um, (laughs) or, you know, stranded on the Amazon River. Um, and having to rely on a, on a, on a group of people to, to stay the night that you've never met before. It, it was that human connection mm. that was first when you go off to these places, because largely you're in a very, very foreign situation. You have to immediately trust mm. the people that are bringing you into those areas. And then it was about, okay, I am curious about these foods and nuts and how are they living? How are they using these plants and herbs and all these things? And then I'll always for the last 20 years on the periphery, I'm like, wow, they're on the one hand, I'm learning so much about old ways of doing things. And on the other hand, they're suffering. They Mm. don't have clean water. Um, They need to provide for their family because largely we're we're there's very few cultures in the world that completely live off the land anymore so so we have to rely on this uh modernization on the one hand so how do they do that very difficult um so i'd look at like how can i improve their lives if i do a trade with them and and Mm. they can they can do that and at the same time I would start got, start get start started to get into waterborne issues that you know nine thousand kids a day are dying of waterborne diseases that are fecal infused bad water situations where they're f- f- filling up jerry cans and then bringing back to their family and playing Russian roulette every time they drink water. So it's something like this more or less should be a air quote here easy fix, right? Just it, it, clean it, water. And in fact, it really is, which is why it's, which is why I've struggled Mm. with that going, okay, so you have number one, people dying, 97.5% of the people dying of degenerative diseases in America, or at least have degenerative diseases. Um, You have 9,000 kids dying of waterborne diseases, most of which the whole communities are suffering from from clean water. You have all these nations around the world that largely are absolutely failing mm. at basic needs of the people. So I I kind of was like, I'm not an anti-government person at all, mm. but I'm kind of like, you guys suck at your job. <laughs> you guys, you guys are horrible mm. and almost just have me throw a dart at the globe and there's going to be people suffering and don't have food, don't have water, go to Malaysia Mm. and go hang out with people who are living in our plastic and tell me that that is something that's uh, anyone should be living in. Of course not. So uh, I just believe that it's a power of us and our communities and our residents of our own groups i mean you're from the military get a band of get a band of brothers and sisters together they can do some shit right small team on a mission you'd be amazed the change that can ripple out yeah dude so if you take instead of destruction or protection you do it out of the desire to actually change create safety for for animals around the world 
that are being tortured and butchered and and inhumanely used protect our oceans from plastic and all of this stuff protect our people get our people shelter get our kids clean water so you name it uh every country i've been in um your government's failing Mm. and so all these ngos that pop up yeah great cool but it it comes by way of small bands of people getting together and actually doing things um you know just in the news uh uh world animal news just released a share came on board it was called the loneliest elephant in the world was uh by itself in a cage forever and they finally got this this uh elephant free uh, and brought it back to pakistan where it had this beautiful place to live the rest of its life amazing you know it's like so you know look what Cher did she used her influence put her own cash in uh and and did that now why don't we keep doing that we can and we have great organizations doing stuff like that so so i care about the environment and people and animals so it's like everywhere you look you're seeing the destruction of choices and the destruction of power uh thwarted in the wrong direction so, so my world right now is moving from super, I will always be connected to superfoods. I will always find superfoods. I will always connect uh, and, and be involved with all of that stuff. But I'm moving and expanding my world into all of these things I've seen for so long on the ground into actionable things that we can, can do differently. And so much of we started to do it on, on down to earth as well. We were able to go to these places that, jaguar rescue that was in costa rica saving these beautiful monkeys from being electrocuted from unprotected line you know um human uh power Mm. lines and stuff like that and so you know there's so many things that we're doing horribly and i don't stay on that it's like let's just get together with groups of people that know what to do and how to do it and let's make some changes. That's where I'm moving. And so going all the way back to take care of yourself and your health and your relationships, and then be altruistic. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Without a doubt that being in service outside, beyond yourself is therapeutic to your heart, to your cholesterol, Mm -hmm. to your brain. We know that. That's ways we can measure in ways that I don't think we ever will, you know? Exactly. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I feel good yeah, yeah. when I am in doing that. I just did a, a tree planting for uh, um, uh, onetree.org, and we're planting endemic trees throughout California. And just literally with my own hands, hmm. putting new saplings in the ground. Amazing. Um, wow. And to be able to do that is so incredible to do it. And then knowing you're connected to this goal of hundreds of thousands of change of trees that are changing and helping in the ecosystem. And then let's just keep doing that and doing that. And and those are infinitely different things like that, that you can get involved with Um, human trafficking, uh, plastic free ocean, Yeah, you name it. Like you said, throw a dart on the globe and, you know, pick a cause. Um, Exactly. Yeah, all necessary. Yeah. Well, Darren, you mentioned earlier uh, to kind of, you know, shift gears a little bit. uh, I want to address something that, you know, I have learned so much from you about uh, and that, you know, from your book and all of the work that you're putting out now, I I would say is kind of like the foundation and that's superfoods. And so much so, I mean, you've even, you know, got your own product out, shout out, you know, Barucas. Uh, I haven't tried them yet, but uh, I mean, I know anything you put your name behind is going to be powerful, immensely powerful for us. Um, what is that term, superfoods? What does it really mean? What does it not mean? And, you know, what are some examples of things that people can like tap into, go out, get today, here now that is going to add value and vitality to their life? You know, I, I will define superfoods a little differently because I think I think you can make a choice of romaine lettuce, two romaine lettuces next to each other. One was sent to you from who knows where. You don't know where it's from. Another one was uh, grown in biodynamic rich 
regenerative ag agriculture from, you know, your farmer down the street five miles away. Yeah. One could argue that that is super food, right? It's super connected to everything that supports the economy, the, the people, the local communities, and the better way of growing food as opposed to monocropping and or chemicalized growing mm -hmm. food conventionally. So I will expand superfood from that perspective. I think our lens mm -hmm. needs to change. My lens has changed. Our definition changed. needs to change. Exactly. So, you know, so, but, but that being said, think of it also as the food you're taking in, every bite you're consuming, how much nutrients and benefit are you getting from each bite as opposed to something that is not grown very correctly. It may have also toxic compounds in it that's detrimental to your health. So not only you can look at it as organic and biodynamic and all of these locally sourced foods, et cetera, and that is free of toxic comp mm -hmm. compounds and pesticides, and it's also highly contributive from a polyphenol, antioxidant, micronutrient rich. So is there sometimes a little cost difference? Yes, but you're not taking in disease-causing, cancer-causing pesticides that they've been experimenting on us for the last 75 years, which is insane to me. Mm -hmm. Glyphosate, Roundup Ready, all of that stuff, which we already know the beautiful work by Dr. Zach Bush, yeah, ripping yeah. apart our digestive system. He was just um, on your show recently. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, 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 incredible. Yeah, so, so, so my superfood definition, and at the same time, there could be a beautiful apple, and then I could say, you know, there's an incredible durian or jackfruit that is, you know, under or or. Camu Camu, like everyone saw on yeah, the show, yeah, yeah. right? So Camu Camu is like under so much stress in the Amazon. It's being flooded by the Amazon. Uh, and in within that environment, and then Maka at 16,000 feet, mm. uh, Shazandra, uh, it's stressed in the sovereign areas of, of the mountains of China. These There's things that are earning their existence every day. Exactly. They have to earn their existence. Incredible. Yeah. So their, their environment is stressing them and they've adapted to those stressors with compounds mm. that are not only protecting them to continue to grow. It just so happens that these beautiful plants and, and fungal kingdom mushrooms and mycelium that it just so happens that we consume them and we benefit largely from all of those compounds yeah. um, to help us thrive. So you've got, you've got herbs, you've got super herbs, you've got super mushrooms, you've got super foods. So it's really taking on this idea that everything you put in your mouth, and I get food needs to taste good. Yeah, sure. And I, and I celebrate food like crazy. Yeah. Like when, when food is fresh and alive, it, is exploding with mm. flavor and i'm not afraid of carbohydrates i'm not afraid of fruits zero not at all and the great work by uh 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 the guys um uh well, what's the name uh i forget i'll, I'll have to remember the book but it, it, there's so much that we're missing out with this phobia of food mm. that we need to get back to our common sense get back to the the harvesting, the celebration of whole healthy foods that are so delicious and so abundant, yeah, but we've yeah. been manipulated through sugar, salt, and fat. And that is mm. an interesting thing because that the sugar, salt, and fat has manipulated our senses, which then um, the evolutionary aspect of leaning forward it is always a score when you find food that is nutrient dense. That's oh, in our yeah, yeah. in our limbic system. So if I don't have to expend too much energy to find caloric density, that's a win from an evolutionary standpoint. That's survival. Exactly. Yeah. At its deepest level. Because the body doesn't want to expend more energy than what it 
what it can find and use or else we would die, right? So, so now sugar, fat, salt is added. Fat for sure, refined, everything else. When you have, we can just go down the street and find all this caloric density that's processed without you know the proper fibers and whole food then it just goes right to that limbic system that's a score i'm just going to keep eating that and and that's the problem with overeating it bypasses all the food manufacturers know this so we and then our microbes change mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. now that microbiological system changes which largely is is it gets thrown off and changes our entire assimilative function as well as our immune system it rewrites so, our operating system completely absolutely yep and so and so now if we go back and go listen i've been manipulated through food science and through you know the the largely these few corporations that are running most of these processed foods i've been manipulated through that just realize that that is true and then go back to whole foods, go on the outside of the grocery store and get the <laughs> yeah. whole healthy food or right and true external lab people never, never fails. Exactly. And, and then you will start rewriting and then those cravings will also start going away and you, you'll start craving the beautiful bounty that is already here. Eat, eat, yeah. eat a fresh organic date and tell me that, that, that the universe and God already didn't create the most beautiful candy in the world anyway. Amazing. Well, so well said, man. And uh, one other thing I want to definitely dive into here as we begin to kind of wrap up, uh, you, you definitely began to talk about it in the beginning. And um, it's one of my favorite chunks of your world. And particularly in your podcast, the fatal conveniences. Um, what a mind blowing concept, something that is so duh, uh, but also kind of scary. I mean, the things that you go over in that segment, I think like if we just took those two words, fatal conveniences and the listener, the viewer, we, we just took those two words and that concept and applied them to today, your life here today. Can you dive deeper into that for us, please? What does that term really mean? And how can we use this lens of a fatal convenience to, to empower our lives, to empower our healthy habits, to empower our questioning, just everything really. I love this concept. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it, you know, it's funny because I really, I realized that what was something that was going on and it's in two very powerful ways in my life. My father, before he passed away, he passed away 17 years ago, but about five to six, mm -hmm. seven years of his life before he passed away. What year was that, by the way? Uh, so he passed away in 2004. My father passed in 2005. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Sorry to hear that. Likewise, yeah. Um, terminal illness, uh, one of those just freak, freak things. Absolutely. Wow. But was, you know, not to go too off on a tangent, but was the biggest catalyst in my life for questioning everything for my own health and my wellness. And just in the beginning was fear. Like, I don't ever want to end up like that, but also now empowering because we, we get to learn this human body, right? Yeah, 100%, dude. I mean, if, if there's anything that doesn't spark the legacy more than that, like seriously because that now how I, i'm going to take that information and expand the legacy and like yeah. i can't do the same thing because yeah. look at look at the results or whatever that is whatever those messages are but i'm certainly going to live full on ever forward right Absolutely. and so that was that so, was his phrase entirely like oh no way legacy yeah it was his mantra he instilled in us my whole family growing up for years and to his dying breath, you know, nothing was a problem. There's a gift in it somewhere in here. And uh, yeah, ever forward is my entire being, his legacy, everything for sure. Dude, I'm honored, honored to hear that. And celebrate, I celebrate him. That's why too. we're here today, <laughs> to celebrate this. Amazing, um, I, I, I love that. I feel, I feel that powerfully and, and I think, hey, and I think, uh, yeah, I mean, my father, uh, you know, that his death was the catalyst for me to get, to get rolling. And um, I forgot what the question was. At this point, <laughs> the fatal but, conveniences. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> so, but, but going back to my dad. So when yeah. my dad, my dad was uh, an, ag an agricultural professor at the university of Minnesota, 
He then tenured and retired driving his motorcycle through the hallways of the university. He just wanted to do it and he just wanted to rip his Harley. What a badass. Uh, yeah. He's, he had that little part of him that he, tr he tried to be so good and like be the professor, be the smart guy, be all, but yet he had this little tweak. That's awesome. Like, yeah. Um, which, which is funny because very much I found out later as we kind of got to know, know each other as adults, I'm like, Oh, I see that in like, we're very similar. There it is. Um, and so my dad, after he retired, then he went back, uh, became a counselor at the university of Minnesota. And in that process, kind of, as he got into that, he realized that he was getting foggy. His brain was fogging out and he couldn't think. And he would go into these dazes. And what, what he realized was way before anyone else he started researching and realizing that he had what's now people don't even know still called ke a chemical sensitivity disorder hmm. so chemicals in the environment if there were colognes on someone deodorants uh laundry oh, wow. detergent uh carpets that were new paints fire retardants on um sofas you name it all of that stuff tweaked him out he wow. couldn't even think wow. so he had to end up writing these letters and educating people who was around him hey please don't wear this here's an alternative please don't wear that here's an alternative that's really where i started seeing fatal conveniences mm. so my father was trying to educate and listen i'm thinking that's weird, dad. Like, yeah. I'm thinking, is this in your head? Like, dad, you can't be asking everybody to change their, their life and their colognes and their scents and like uh, the carpets, right? Like on the that, surface, that's, that's quote crazy, right? Right. And then you come to realize the reality is the reality that 99% of this stuff is never tested. Mm. And that the, the data is actually showing and proving that these are, disruptive compounds, organoleptic compounds that we are ingesting and we're also in like transdermally being exposed to that are absolutely hormone disrupting, cancer causing, toxic compounds that it was only then, it was just this tiny bit and not everyone else because my dad, he was an alcoholic mm. and sober for 30 years but his liver and he lost his thyroid because he was an engineer uh, on creating atomic bombs. There's some radiation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my dad was at one of the chief engineers in atomic bomb creations uh, and I, which I didn't know until later, but I did know that he had his, his uh, thyroid was shot and his liver was shot from the alcoholism. And so he, his immune system was just compromised. So oh, any, yeah. any exposure to this stuff would throw them over the edge. So long story short, that is in the back of my mind. I'm now smelling stuff and I'm now like, I'm, that's invasive to me mm. because I can start picking up on how that is not good for me to ingest and to smell. And so to this day, if mm. someone wears any perfume, I don't care if it's the best in the world, essential oils, all that stuff, fantastic. Mm. Anything chemicalized, it just, it just gives me a headache. Wow. So, so, this, so when I'm looking at the world 20 years ago with this amazing researcher, Dr. Mosin, who were managed that I studied with, 20 years ago, he's telling me about the fatal conveniences of a cell phone. Mm. And he's like, this is changing the RNA DNA signaling. It's creating tumors. And I'm looking at them going, yeah, but why would they have these? I don't understand. It's this kind of frequency. It's this kind of Hertz frequency. It's this kind of vibration. It's this kind of blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, wow. And so of course, do I have a shield device on here? Yes. Do I turn it off when it's on my body? Yes. So all of these things, so most of my life, I'm being exposed to this information. So I had to finally go okay i got my own podcast mm. and i'm seeing this stuff for the last 20 years like everywhere i look these chemicalized companies from detergents to deodorants 
to, you know, uh, toxic compounds that, that uh, they put in women's underwear, uh, contributing to breast cancer, uh, heavy metals in our underarm deodorant, getting into our lymphatic system, uh, obviously the cell phone and the radiation, the EMF. I think about everything at home. I, I battle everybody with, on this all the time. Oh, it smells so clean in here. I say, clean doesn't have a smell. That is a fatal convenience. The smell of something clean. No, 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 no. We have been completely misguided on that. 100%. Yeah. I mean, every, and that's the aha. Mm. We've gotten so used to this stuff and to the smell. I did, I did a fatal con- convenience to tweak people out on new car smell. I, I just saw that one. Yeah, I haven't listened to it yet. Yeah, I was like, ooh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Because we it's, all love it, that, right? We all have this association to it. And same like, what is Tide laundry turn yeah. smell like? Yeah. We have this association. My mom did it in the 70s. It definitely what didn't have any uh, testing whatsoever. Yeah. But we have this association to clean. But we have to reorient ourselves just like you said with what clean is and how to get clean yeah and so everywhere i look there's a fatal convenience every everything from do i have blue light glasses on yeah because a fatal convenience of this overstimulated blue from these damn computer screens are hurting my own circadian rhythm hurting my melatonin and the overstimulation of blue light so it's like that's a fatal convenience Mm -hmm staring at damn screens, sitting in this stupid chair too, uh, <laughs> too much, right? With closed off, yeah. uh, concentrated psoas muscles, pulling in our lower back with our shoulders rolling forward, head position, push forward, neck pain, back pain, psoas We're Sacrificing pain. our health for conveniences. I just truly, 100%. from start to day, like the more and more you talk, I'm just like, wow, like it's, it's even more ingrained everywhere than, than we realize. Hundred percent. So my my dream that I've started here is just to wake people back up, gain the power. It's not to be overwhelmed by this stuff, but just make small choices because it literally is just replacing habits. Like some of this stuff, we've advanced so well into creating clean products, yeah, right? We have clean deodorants. We have this incredible company, Caldera Labs, this is one of the most beautiful yeah. face serums, right? We, we both are partners with them. I saw, I saw oh, your app the other day. Absolutely. Yeah, I've been Dude. using it for a year. Incredible. Dude, 27 yeah. active botanicals, incredibly clean, mm. tested, no animal cruelty. Yeah. I'm like, dude, if I was going to formulate a product, that's what I would do. And so it's, mm. it's, it, we have to, as a society, support these companies and, and, and not, we got to evolve and then de-evolve our conglomerates that we've spent so much money towards and, and push these companies towards making changes. Now, are some of them doing it? Yes, but we need more pressure. Some yeah. of these big companies yeah. I've been finding out and learning absolutely want to get back into the game and change these things. So I don't want to make every big company evil because there are some good people in those companies pushing in the right direction. They need to know they rely on our feedback. They rely on our, our, our dollar purchase power. You know, we are voting with our dollars. So let's let them know people. Yeah. So if they don't change, then they're out. Don't spend your hard earned money uh, towards companies that, that we're now revealing and sharing with you. Don't care. Uh, Largely there are as conscious choices of, of putting toxic compounds in, they know it. Uh, so there is, it's not about evil per se. Yeah. It's about uh, money first and don't fix it if people don't know about it. And so part Very of true. the, part of the love here that I want to share is I, I, I saw my father suffer daily with this exposure and this is happening whether you are feeling the effect or not your body is swimming in this toxic soup and I just want companies to do better. And I want people to ultimately not have to suffer from this stuff. Well, Darren, um, I feel like I could talk to you for hours, man. So, so much truth and value here, but I cannot think of a better way to kind of round out here. The, the question I ask everybody at the end um, is this, 
how do you live a life ever forward? What does that mean to you? And it's even more pertinent here because of how you just ended that statement of watching your father suffer. I, I went through the same thing, 18 months with his terminal illness. Um, and it was in that duration of time where I thought everything was ending. I was losing all of this. And I did. We lost him. But we, I gained so much. Yeah. I gained everything that I'm doing here today. I gained this new perspective and appreciation for the human potential and the human body and what we can do internally and externally. And I told you before, that was his phrase, ever forward, ever forward, ever forward. And so that's the only reason I'm here today doing what I do and connecting with people like yourself that in my opinion are doing the same. But I would love to know, man, what does that mean to you? How do you live a life ever forward? I think that um, ever forward, uh, what that means to me is I'm going to go back to there's nothing actually the irony of going back. I'm not going back. I'm going forward. I'm going in and moving forward always. It, the, the, for me, the only thing that fuels the truth for me is, is deeply being quiet. When I'm deeply quiet, the voice, the connection, the essence of the truth of who I am and what I am and what this beautiful universe and planet is, that is what I'm in service to the, the truth of myself, the light in myself that is connected to everything and all things that moves me forward. I do everything I can to not be directed by anything else. And I, and I practice that on a daily basis. So if it is not of the light, if it is not contributing to the planet and the people and the animals to make everything better, without a lose, and it's a win, 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 I will move ever forward in that direction because I can't and won't uh, be excited to do anything else for profit, for money, for this or that. Um, it's, the, it's, the, it's an inside game. And so the more I listen to myself, the more I connect to the infiniteness of myself, uh, the more that fuels me ever forward. It's an inside game. I love that, man. I love that. It's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I cannot wait to see what else you got coming out uh, in the world through your books and your podcast and your content and just, you know, everything you're doing, man. It's, it's, it's needed and appreciated. So thank you. Thanks, Chase. This has been such a pleasure. And I'm glad you brought up your dad and I resonate. Likewise. Thank you. And uh, I'm grateful for the, for the work that you're doing and, and what you're putting out. So I appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Amazing, man. Be well. Have a great day. Uh, looking forward to seeing what else you put out there. And uh, if I can ever do anything in return, don't hesitate. Hit me up. And uh, looking forward to connecting soon, man. Thanks, brother. And uh, yeah, next time we'll be in person. Sure. All right, beautiful. All right. Be All well. Right. Talk soon. Cheers, All man. Right, man. You too. Cheers.